I'm going to try something different this time. Instead of having a piece of tape that goes, you know, right across and then a whole bunch of double-sided tape on it, I'm just going to have this, just this one here, with a little double-sided piece here and here. And the idea is, I'll just stick it down and, uh, yeah, save tape. And then I'll have the other piece over here and the other piece over here. Give myself lots of room to be able to get at it from the with the airbrush instead of having everything on one strip. It may or may not work. All right, now for this piece here, this uh, metal decking is going to be dark gray. Unfortunately, the guns that are going to be mounted on here they're also dark gray, so the contrast is not going to show up, you know, as good as I'd like. Now, for the bottom, it's going to be light gray. And all around the outside is going to be light gray. Um, now, there's something that's kind of troubling, and that is, don't you think that this railing should be higher? I wonder how high that is in reality. Okay, it's uh, 91 thousandths of an inch. Let's do the math. Okay, I was right. It, uh, I knew it didn't look right. Uh, if you do the math, it's only about 22 inches high or so. Um, you know, that's more like something you trip over and fall into the ocean rather than keep you from falling off. As I was editing out this little scene just now, I thought, you know, this does not sound right. Because if you multiply 91.5 thousandths times 200, you're not going to end up with any number that starts with a 2. Yeah, so I redid it, and it works out to about 18.3 inches high. That's even worse. For sure you're going to fall in the ocean. Maybe there's something more that has to go on there yet, I don't know.
Now I realize I didn't show it here, but I've gone all around the inside of that short guardrail with a brush. And I'll wait a while and then we'll do the deck. Now, I better talk about this before I completely forget. In the comments, one of the viewers was mentioning how he was thinking of making a photo etch bender out of a hinge. And I think he probably was thinking along the lines of what I was, what I had done here. And what I mentioned was that the problem is that when you put your piece of photo etch on there and you press down on it, this has a tendency to slide around. What I had done was put little pieces of rubber on the corners here that helped a little bit. But of course, it's it's nothing like the real thing. You know, the, the real thing when you put your piece of photo etch in and when you clamp it down, should anything move, everything moves all together and the piece doesn't get out of line on you. Now, just as I was typing a reply to him, I all of a sudden thought, what if you took a large brass hinge like this and what if you could, uh, you know, cut cut part of it down so that when it would fold together on itself like this, it it would have a, a, a it would leave a a little ledge. Okay, there be there would be a ledge here, and then this piece this piece here would be shorter, and then in that way, now of course you don't want to have a, a much bigger hinge than this. Now, also, you, <laughs> I don't know how you would cut it if you didn't have a, you know, like a, a milling machine. For, for somebody like Andy, who, who made this one here, uh, you know, he's a machinist, obviously. And uh, for him, cutting down a hinge would be, you know, he would probably do that with his brain tied behind his back. You know, it would be just a simple thing. But for the average person like, like myself, or probably that viewer, uh, who I believe is in Australia. Anyway, uh, yeah, it, it might be a little bit harder, but it was just just a thought that I I, I would I would mention that that if you had a, a hinge that was longer this way, de deeper, I guess you call it, uh, then you could cut one of the wings off, and when you, like I say, it would give you a bit of a little ledge here to put your photo etch piece on. It's just a thought. It it might not work because you'll notice it. It doesn't go together uh, flush here. It, it, there's sort of a gap there. Anyway, like I say, it was just a thought. But you can't beat the real thing. You know, and I was mentioning to one of the other viewers that when I got this thing, I was thinking uh, uh, it made me want to get a, a milling machine because uh, back when I got my metal lathe, oh, I guess four or five years ago now, I was thinking at the time, you know, I should get a milling machine too, but uh, I think my getting uh, big heavy machines is, is over. Those days are gone, so uh, anyway, I sure do like this, I'll tell you. It's really nice. Yep. Now, you may remember me having said earlier that I was unhappy about the fact that this deck that I'm going to paint dark gray is going to blend in with a lot of the pieces. Okay. Now, this little anti-aircraft gun is supposed to go right on on the top like that. There we go. And there will be another one over here. So, in other words, they are going to blend in with the dark gray. And uh, I was thinking, how about if I was to use this one here? If you remember, I mixed this one up some time ago, and then I realized I couldn't use it because it was sort of a semi-gloss. But, you know, this is a metal deck. It could be that, you know, semi-gloss won't look half, half bad, and it may contrast slightly with the dark gray that these little pieces are uh, made up of. I'm going to give it a try. And if it's really, really bad, I'll just paint over it. Well, I was trying not to put it on too thick because I didn't want the uh, the texture of the uh, metal plating to be lost. But I'm thinking I may have ended up leaving it looking kind of blotchy here. It's still pretty sticky. It's, it hasn't dried yet. But I quite well imagine it's going to retain that sort of glossy look that you're seeing right now reflected in the light there. 
Um, well, we'll see how it looks after uh, the pieces are set in place. And if it's really bad, I'll just, you know, like I said before, I can always go over it with, you know, the other paint. I have gone all around it and given it a second coat now. I think I improved on the blotchiness. But you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on there, as well as the anti-aircraft guns on the outsides and the light here. There's another couple of fairly large pieces going here and here. So, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be just fine. Okay, this gap that you see in here right now, I've got both of these plates parallel to each other, and it's approximately four millimeters. Now, here's another thought I had. What would be wrong with finding a piece of, you know, plate steel that was four millimeters thick and just put it in there. Then when this part here would come down on top of it, you know, it, it could be a piece like four or five inches square. It would it would lay flat on it. And uh, anyway, I went down to my workshop and I did find another uh, hinge that was more compatible with what I was talking about. And you'll notice that it is, uh, the two plates come come together almost perfectly parallel here. Um, so if a person was to, you know, cut it down a little bit, when this, when this one comes down onto this one, say, um, you know, it's going to push down more evenly on the photo etch rather than, rather than biting into it and maybe cutting it off. And that would be another thing. You wouldn't want to have your edges really sharp because, uh, you know, it would be possible to, uh, to accidentally cut the photo etch instead of bending it. Uh, anyway, uh, but... Now that I think about it, if I was to do this all over again, if Andy had to sent me this one, um, I probably would find a, a piece of, of plate steel. Uh, in fact, even if it wasn't four millimeters thick, let's say it was just 10 gauge, you know, s slip it in there and, and it, at least uh, in that rate, when you put, say this was the piece of photo etch that you wanted to bend, at least uh, that way, everything would move together. You wouldn't have the problem that, that I have when I try to uh, uh, do it on glass and it slides around. Um, you know, like this. Anyway, enough. I've gone on and on and on here. Yeah. Thanks again, Andy. This is slick. We have a lot of pieces that we have to mount on the bottom of here before we can take this piece and attach it to this piece. And uh, I was going to go for the ones that were sort of easy to put on, but I'm thinking now I'll leave those until last. And I'll put on the ones that are more in the center, because I may be wanting to actually hold on to this. And these other little pieces, I don't want to accidentally break them off. There's, there's going to be a piece sticking out here, a piece sticking out here, and the little tiny ones sticking out the front there. So we'll do the ones that are, you know, more closer in. And uh, now there's going to be the whistle, okay? It shows two whistles here. Now we're just going to do the one, because this is the Bismarck, not the Trippets. And from the photograph, the whistle is on the starboard side. So if we turn this right side up, this is the starboard side which means we want to put the whistle right there. I'm just going to do a dry run here. Yeah, that'll be okay.
get it straightened around here. Okay, now when that evaporates, it should uh, be pretty strong if I don't break it out. You can see here I'm going to have to uh, paint over that. Now from what I can tell, this piece here, if I look at the diagram and then watch where, where it drops down, it goes upside down. right there just like that I don't think you can see it but if you look at the bottom of that this photo etch piece right here you can see that it's sort of made in such a way that it will fit in that little uh, area right there I think I think that's how it's supposed to go it looks like to me anyway Maybe I should uh, squeeze this together just a little bit. There's a tremendous amount of finagling goes on with this stuff. It's kind of fun. It's you know it is kind of fun. I know I sometimes seem to complain about it, but I'm enjoying this. Now, I'm going to get my uh, CA glue out and uh, see if I can't just put a few drops on there. You know, it might be a good idea that after I get it in, in the exact place, put a little weight or something on there just to hold it down. Because when I touch it with the needle with the CA glue, I'm probably going to be knocking it off. You'll notice that I've uh, changed things here. I got it off that slippery paper because I was trying to prop everything up and stuff was just wanting to slide around too much. And when I'd rest my hands on the paper, it would move. And anyway, this is much better. Now here's hoping that my second cup of coffee hasn't kicked in too badly. Alright, I think I'll just wait about a minute or two and maybe if I blow on that we can get it to start to cure and then I can turn it around to the ones on the other side. I know I could use curing agent but it would probably play havoc with the paint. Doesn't want to release here. Okay, I got a little bit of a larger droplet here now. Ah, I think I got it. According to the manual, this is supposed to be fastened up against it, somewhere like that. And I'm thinking that if I put it there, then I might have trouble getting this little thing that goes, you know. Good thing you can read my mind, right? Okay, maybe I should put that little part on first and then just be very careful not to break it off. Okay, two things here. The little piece that I think that, that I thought might have to be nipped off, I think we're gonna have to nip it off. I can't see any reason why it's there. 
The second thing is, I think this is one of those situations where I'm just going to have to go ahead and do this off camera and then show it to you after. Now I was thinking of, you know, painting right here. But you know, I don't think I need to because it's going to be covered up pretty much by this little uh, piece right here. Okay. I wonder if I was to maybe take this whole assembly and sort of lean it back about 45 degrees, it might be easier to put in place and then as long as I can get one little dab of CA glue in the right spot let it set then I can twist it around to conveniently do everything else and now I realize that's not exactly 45 degrees but it's close enough Just get a little bit right in there. Oops, it moved. The CA is still liquidy, so that's good. I just sort of just gent gently touch it here. You know what? CA set up. And it's set up in the right place. Let's give it a tiny bit more here. Just Okay. Now I'll let that cure and then I can turn it around and do the other spots. Now these little pieces of photo etch, they're kind of notched so that they would go over the whistles and they're supposed to sit like that. Now this one's not going to have a whistle. So it'll sit there like, not quite like that, but we'll get it, don't worry, we'll get it. Yeah, something like that. It looks pretty good to me. Looks like it's got like a, again the bottom part of this is is notched so that it fits in into the spot. Okay, now we'll uh, do the CA glue thing again, and once again I'll probably try and use something to hold it down. Okay, once again we've gotten ourselves off of the paper. I'm going to try not to knock this off its spot. Come on. Maybe I need a little bit more on there. There are supposed to be little micro applicators that you can get for these bottles. I've seen them on Amazon, I should order some. Trying to get the angle just right here. Whoop. I think I need more on my applicator. That rattling you hear is my little tray. I think I'm getting it now. Okay, let's let that cure. I was looking at my applicator just now and I think the little prongs had gotten themselves squeezed together on the on the eye of that needle. worked a little better. Let's see if I can get the one on the back now. I have to 
reposition myself here. Okay. Now the other one, we come in from the back. to the other one where the whistle is pretty much the same way but you know I think that's it for today's video thanks for watching all being well we'll see you again tomorrow okay after I said that I went and did the other one where the whistle was and I thought I may as well show it now we'll see you tomorrow